landed property design secrets that seriously raise capital value, formerly kept secrets unless you were the client. 10 Mistakes That Most Homeowners Make Right here, I'm going to share with you the 10 mistakes that homeowners normally make whenever they do a home redevelopment. Avoid those mistakes and reverse it so that it's going to bring you a better outcome. The first mistake that homeowners make is they don't know how to bring up the capital value of your house and where to put the focus into. The second mistake is that there's no key decision maker or there's poor decision making. I would advise you to actually go through the project planning type below where you can download and go through all the steps. The third mistake is under scheduling and under budgeting. Make sure you have enough budget and enough time, especially for design, authority approvals and construction. So that way you won't have any surprises coming at you. The number fourth mistake is don't overinvest in the scale of your development. Understand where the value lies and where the focus is because you might be over investing in something and you're not getting the return out of it. Be realistic in the scale of development between where investment and value lies so that you draw a correct line to balance between the both of them. For number five, some owners are putting too much emphasis on one particular aspect or area of the house. It could be an internal area they're focusing on or they're focusing only on the exterior aspect of the building. It has to be holistic. And that's where I'm gonna show you in later videos how to really make a very holistic space in order to bring up the perceived value of the home. Sometimes uh, owners go overboard with their personal preference in a particular look in the house that they are either building or redeveloping. And that can be a problem because especially if you are trying to resell back into the marketplace and you have a personal preference in there and it doesn't gel with the marketplace, then you're actually creating an obstacle. You're spending too much money to create a property object that looks kind of not in sync with what the market wants. I had a client that wanted to have uh, marble on the walls, especially green marble. Now, how many people in the marketplace would want to have a green marble wall, right? And then there was this other client who had a sanitary fitting where the knob was down here and then the faucet was coming down from the ceiling as a tube right in front of your face and that was really taking the whole look of the bathroom. And if you're a buyer who's wanting to come in and look at that guy's property, you probably would not want it. And then there's number seven where owners are insisting on going ahead with some works that might be affecting the neighbor or on public property. And without the advice of an architect, an engineer or a surveyor, they go ahead with it. Then they're open for either a lawsuit by the neighbor or being hauled up by the authorities. Not paying enough attention to those areas that we can't see with our eyes is number eight, especially when it comes to plumbing and, and especially when it comes to roofs. Because roofs can leak if you're not doing it the right way and if you don't have a consultant on board and you're just working with a contractor, that's when the problems come in. So to counter that, make sure you have an architect or an engineer on board who can give you proper advice but go with a good architect and with a good contractor, and that's important. Most owners go straight to hire a design and build contractor where the consultant like the architect is actually held under the responsibility by the contractor. But because you don't have a consultant to lead the design process initially, to bring in all your requirements and your needs, but left it to the contractor, you probably end up with what you call a cookie cutter design that's very, very standard that doesn't fit your requirements and more importantly it may not be properly administered especially when the architect is not in control of the construction guess who takes over the control of the project it is the contractor and finally at number 10 even though you then decide that you wanted to get an architect and his consultant team to come in and advise you the architects like any other professional they specialize and they have certain skill sets and the way to carry out the project, the design, the administration, especially giving service to you is so important. And I urge you to find the right architect and the right team to service you so that you are guided into the right process and you have the right product at the end of the day.